How have these writers made such chillingly accurate predictions of events that have not yet happened? Bizarre coincidence or some kind of prophetic insight? Norman Mailer in 1951, American author Norman Mailer released a novel named Barbary Shaw. When he began working on it, a tale of various strange housemates living in post-World War II Brooklyn, he had no plans to include a Russian spy as a character. However, during the writing process, he found himself introducing a Russian spy in the US as a minor character in the plotline. Slowly, as the work progressed, the spy took over as one of the dominant characters in the novel. When the book was completed, and after it had been published, the US Immigration Service arrested a man who lived just one floor below Mailer in the same apartment block. The man was a Colonel Rudolf Abel, who was alleged to be the most wanted top Russian spy working in the US during that time. Mailer later commented that Abel literally had the room beneath him and was open to the idea that some kind of psychic telepathy may have taken place. At the time of the writing, his common sense even told him that it would be impossible to have old Bolsheviks and FBI agents mingling in a share house in Brooklyn Heights. Strangely, while working on Barbary Shaw, he always felt as if he were not writing the novel himself, but acting as a kind of cipher for some intelligence which had chosen to use him to write the book. His question was, who knows what glimpses of reality we pick up unconsciously, even telepathically? Spooks other authors have also suggested that a storyline and its details were coming from a source outside of themselves, often resulting in works that are eerily predictive. The writers of the BBC TV show Spooks, a drama based on MI5 operations, had an uncanny ability to predict significant events in advance. In June 2005, they filmed a storyline wherein a train station was targeted by terrorists. This was a month before the same terrible event occurred in real life. The episode was not going to be aired as it was so accurate, but after a delay it was released late in the form of a heavily edited version. The screenwriters for the series had a consistent capacity to predict news headlines, with some commenting that the similarities between the action and the real life events were chilling. The film team also produced an episode about the devastating effect of a financial meltdown caused by unethical bankers, which later that same year also became a reality. In 2003, the production team shot an episode that portrayed the chaos caused after London was placed in lockdown for a state visit by a US president. Again, the dramatisation was aired just months before those events took place in real life, with the arrival of George W. Bush in Britain. The show's first series in 2002 included an episode about race riots. Jane Featherston, the executive producer of Spooks, observed that at the time it was broadcast, the 10 o'clock news immediately followed with a report describing actual race riots. Many viewers noticed that there was a frequent number of scenarios on the show that were frighteningly seen to mirror real events in the news. Morgan Robertson Other chilling literary predictions of the future have occurred in the past. In 1898, a fictional book about an ocean liner called The Titan was published, which gave detailed information 14 years ahead of time about the sinking of a real ship named the Titanic, which was to occur in 1912. The fictional vessel in the novella strikes an iceberg while making an Atlantic crossing and goes down in the North Atlantic. There are several eerie similarities with the real-life disaster. In Morgan Robertson's narrative, the fictional sinking takes place in April, the Titanic having sunk on the morning of April 15, 1912. In the story, some of the passengers are rescued by a passing ship, but others sink and drown because there are not enough lifeboats provided to save everyone on board. 
like the Titanic, the fictional Titan was considered at the peak of technological expertise, luxurious and unsinkable, and carrying the minimum requirement of lifeboats, leading to over a thousand deaths. After the Titanic's sinking, Morgan Robertson denied intentionally trying to access prophetic information in writing his work, but attributed its predictive content to a state entered into by most creative workers. He believed that some can tap into a subliminal realm of the unknown where there is no such thing as time. Robertson was long gone when literary pundits realised that he was no one-hit wonder. A novel that he had written in 1914, a year before his death, described a future war between the US and Japan with eerie similarities to events of World War II. These included a December surprise military strike against Hawaii and later use of hugely powerful superweapons that inexplicably set ships ablaze, blinded sailors and inflamed their skin like severe sunburn. The book seemed to foreshadow the Pearl Harbor attack on the US and use of nuclear weapons during the conflict. Philip K. Dick Famous writer Philip K. Dick also went public about the source of the predictive capacity of many of his fictional stories. While Dick was known to be prone to hallucinations and paranoid delusions, he did foresee and describe in his creative works the development of DNA modification, artificial intelligence, and the use of computers by ordinary citizens, which was a radical idea at the time. He also predicted a nuclear accident in the USSR, with a Chernobyl disaster occurring in 1986, four years after his death. Dick's visions also revealed that his son had a fatal birth defect, which enabled doctors to successfully save the child's life, but only after Dick had told them where and what to look for. Dick spoke of not necessarily accessing future information, but being able to move between multiple realities in the present. He also believed that an intelligent power was imparting wisdom and clairvoyance into his mind perhaps again a case of entering into a state of creative concentration and then accessing the stream to gain information. John Brunner Another science fiction author, John Brunner, wrote a novel in 1968 called Stand on Zanzibar. Set over 40 years later in 2010, this and other of his works make incisive predictions about aspects of future society. These include wearable technology, video calls and virtual avatars, global news and TV on demand, cars being powered by rechargeable electric fuel cells, and aeroplanes offering in-flight entertainment with news and films on screens at each individual seat. He also predicted a phenomenon like the internet and the emergence of computer viruses, as well as social developments such as genetic engineering, same-sex marriage, the legalisation of cannabis and invention of Viagra. The growth of terrorism and emergence of China as the most powerful US rival also figure in his work. Even more uncannily, he describes the US having a leader named President Obomi, who has to deal with a lot of instability. President Obama was serving in 2010. Brunner also foresaw the formation of a European Union of Nations to improve their economies and global influence. This did not happen for another 25 years. According to Morgan Robertson, we are perhaps all capable of accessing prophetic knowledge, and he actually gave some pointers for doing so. His advice included anticipating future discoveries and events and entering into a state he described as hypnotic, telepathic and percipient. Functioning while being half asleep was a step towards accessing a subliminal realm of unknown facts without time limitations and related to dreams. He believed that the data system therein was readily available to anyone if they are able to alter their mind's focus.